Hi folks, Mr. Ackerman here. Thanks for watching. In this video, I want to show you some of the things I'll be looking for in your Shoot Like a Master presentation to the class. Remember, you can do it live or you can do a recording. I'm going to show you something that I did on Google Slides for my own Shoot Like a Master, and that way you'll get an idea of what I'm looking for in whatever format you choose for your presentation. First, I'm going to go through each of the slides quickly just to give you a heads up on what I'm going to present, and then I'm going to do an actual presentation so you can see roughly the pace, the timing, and the level of detail that I'm going to be looking for. So starting on the first slide here, you see I have a title over here, I have my name, and since I chose a background being one of the images of the master photographer, I put the title of the image down here. Moving along, I think you should definitely give us a little bit of a background about your photographer, including a photo of what he or she looks like, possibly in action with the camera or maybe a studio, and some key points. We don't need to know a ton, just enough to get us to understand where you're coming from and to have a sense of why you did the things you did in your shoot. Next up, you might choose to do some examples or show some examples of his or her work. In this case, I have a landscape photo example and a few little keywords here to remind me of what to say while I'm describing the image and also so that my audience can see those keywords and think for themselves. Here's another example because he didn't just shoot landscapes, he shot other kinds of photos. And since there was one more variety that caught my eye, I put that in as well. There's so much more to Ansel Adams than just those three photos, so I included a few more which I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about, but I just wanted to briefly show to the class to give them a little bit more variety so that they can make a decision at the end, did I shoot in his style or not. Next up, I'm outlining my plan to shoot like a master. I'm going to talk about when I'm going to go, where I'm going to go, why I'm going to do those things, what I'm going to do when I get there. I'm also going to talk about things like how I'm going to edit and so on. Next up, I'm going to show the contact sheet with my top images. If you're using Photoshop, remember you can do 12 in a 3x4 grid. Keep the file names in there so that we can refer to them. If you're using Photoshop Express to make your contact sheet, I think the most you can do is 3 across and 3 down, and I don't think you can show the file names, so that's unfortunate, but it is what it is, as they say. By the way, don't convert these into black and white if that's what your photographer does. Don't edit them at all. We just want to see them out of camera. On the next slides, we're going to see how you edit it. So I chose three of the images as my top three. Since Adams shot mainly in black and white, they were all edited to black and white. I talked a little bit about each three. And then I'm going to pick a winner, and I'm going to give it a title, and I'm going to let people look at it. And then we're going to discuss why I selected it and also give some suggestions for what I could do to make it even better next time. And hopefully by the end of this, I can make a conclusion about whether I shot in the style of the photographer, and you can, or the audience can, as well, because that's what this is all about. And then I'll just have an end slide to wrap things up. So, now that you know what I'm going to be presenting, I'm going to do an actual presentation here as if I was a student in the class. So, take note of the time in the video, because I'm going to try to keep this to no more than about seven minutes. Uh, that way, if there's time for questions at the end, they might take up three more minutes, total time ten minutes. If you want yours to be more like five minutes with a couple minutes for questions, that's totally fine as well. All right, here we go. Hello and welcome to my presentation for Shoot Like a Master. The photographer I'll be featuring is Ansel Adams, and as you can see by the background photo I've chosen, whose name is Half Dome with Blowing Snow, he is a landscape photographer primarily. He shoots in black and white and he focuses on the American Midwest and he is very, very famous for his style of landscape photos. Let's take a look at the man. So this is what he looked like with his camera. You see it's an older style camera. It's also a big camera which can take photos with lots and lots of detail and that was something he was known for. He was really good technically. I guess he was a bit of a geek that way. He knew how to make really sharp images which captured a wide tonal range. They were very, very, very sharp and the way they were displayed made you feel like you were right there, like you could reach out and touch different parts of the image. Uh, he was very, very careful 
about the editing that he did and the displaying as well because he felt that as a photographer it wasn't just your job to take pictures it was your job to communicate. Finally he didn't only shoot landscapes he also took photos of artificial landscapes and people. So let's have a look at some of his work. This first one is one of the classic landscape shots that is just screaming Ansel Adams. It's called Snake, Great, uh, Grand Tetons and Snake River. It was shot in Wyoming, 1948. In fact, this photo, when I saw it, I said, I gotta go there. This was years and years ago. And sure enough, the next landscape photography trip I booked was to this very spot, and I got to see the mountains and the river from where he photographed it. It was really, really cool. Uh, let's take a look at the key feature here. The first thing that probably catches your eye is this river and its leading line that takes you into the scene takes you up to the mountains here, which are all at once rough and majestic and beautiful. They have repeating shapes, these triangular peaks. They get bigger and bigger. The size changes. The brightness across them changes. The sky, which they are pointing to, is super interesting with lots of detail and a wide tonal range. And now your eye wanders to other parts. You wonder what's going on in here, deep within the mountain range, maybe some sort of violent storm. You wander down here and you see these trees and you think about their texture and how small they look from here but how big they must be in reality. Same for the riverbank, which might make you think, wow, look at the size of this thing. It's just enormous. Really, really cool photo. It even has a sort of yin-yang kind of effect going on with that river. Uh, and, and so it's got great balance, even though no two parts are exactly the same. Here's another image of his that is quite famous. It's called Rose and Driftwood, shot in San Francisco in 1932. From what I understand, he just took a rose and he put it on a piece of wood that he found on the beach, and he lit it and photographed it. Note the great tonal range once again, from pure black to fairly bright highlights, bright grays. Nothing white, though. It doesn't quite reach the highest or brightest value. There's great form in the flower, and even in the ripples of the driftwood, that form the background. In fact, the space, which we would normally call negative space here, is so interesting compared to the to the flower or the rose that we we spend time looking at it and and examining it. It becomes its own positive space at times. So there's great balance here between the main subject and the background. There's great form and texture, the softness of this and the soft yet roughness of the driftwood as well. Great photo with tons going on. Here's another one. This is one of his people photos that's quite famous. It's called Georgia O'Keeffe and Orville Cox, shot in Canyon de Chez in Arizona in 1937. What strikes me here is that it's an unusual angle to photograph people from. We don't normally photograph from a low angle, but he manages to pull it off beautifully. It really makes them look larger than life against the background, which again is interesting. And let's look at the movement here. Her eyes send you to his eyes, which are pointing down toward his arm here, which is pointing toward her, which gets picked up by this arm here, and then back up to her face. So there's a circular movement to your eyes, even though they sometimes decide, I'm going to jump into the background and see how that's contrasting with the hats. The background itself, great tonal range, very, very bright over here, very, very, very dark over there, and middle grays in between, great form and texture there. Excellent photo. Moving on, here's a few more examples. There's an artificial landscape here, a railway yard, and some airplanes flying in the background. Here's another one of his super famous landscape photos, also shot in Yosemite National Park. And here's one probably from either New Mexico or possibly Arizona, somewhere out there in the American West, where you see a church and an old settlement, an old village of some sort. So what's my plan to shoot like Ansel Adams? Well, I'm going to concentrate on natural landscapes because that's what I love to do and that's mainly what he was about. But I'm also going to spend some time on artificial landscapes and people. I'm going to look for lighting that reveals a wide range of tones because lighting is what gives you that effect. And if you don't shoot in good light, you're never going to have really impactful photos. I'll convert them to black and white and edit to improve the tonal range. While I'm shooting, I'm going to make sure my camera is held really still and there's no camera shake, and I'm going to be careful where I focus so I get that clarity that he's so well known for. 
I'm going to look for lines and shapes and textures to keep the photo interesting and to keep the viewer's eyes moving. I'm going to make sure that each image has a definite point of interest as well, and I'll be shooting these on an iPhone 6S and a few on my DSLR. So let's see how I did. Here's the contact sheet with 12 images. Some of these were shot on an SLR in Ireland, notably this sunset on a beach and also this sunset on a beach, but everything else was shot on an iPhone 6S in Toronto. You can see a wide variety of subjects. This is a still life of rust on a car. Here's a walk through a nature trail. Here's the setting sun when there was a lot of haze in the atmosphere, a waterfall, some crumbled concrete on the floor in the school, setting sun with the hydro lines here, a nature trail with some hydro lines and a person walking along a trail, the house by the school shot from behind some plants, uh, some fog with the picnic benches and those trees looming high near the school, and finally my daughter for a portrait as she stands in front of a foggy background. Which ones did I pick as my top three to say that they had been shot in the style of Ansel Adams? These are the three that I chose, edited in the style of Ansel Adams and presented to you. In a moment, I'm going to tell you which one I chose as the top example of Ansel Adams' style. But for now, let's just have a look. Think about the tonal range, the lines that are used, and the textures. Think about the emphasis, the way your eye moves, the balance, and the repetition of shapes and other elements. In the end, here's what I chose as resembling Ansel Adams' style most closely. I call it Winter Stroll, Toronto 2020. It was photographed right at the beginning of the lockdown in March 2020 when school did not go back after the March break. I was on a nature uh, walk with my family and it was kind of a snowy, rainy day. A woman was walking along this trail with her umbrella and I jumped into position as best I could and snapped this photo. So it wasn't planned in any sense in the moment, but I had been there many times and I had photographed this scene many times, so in that sense I was ready and knew what I had to do. What do I like about it? Well, the leading line is really what sold me. The leading line of this trail reminded me so much of the Tetons and Snake River photo that it really made it hard for me not to select it as being shot in Ansel Adams' style. Notice there's a lot of movement. That line brings your eye through the image up to here, then you go up these hydro towers, and then you can follow the lines of the wires back to this tree which can bring you down back into the photo. There's emphasis on these, but also there's a bit of emphasis on her. Maybe it's because of the proportion. She's so tiny compared to these towers that are looming over her, it creates some drama. There's a decent tonal range, not as good as I would have liked. There are dark grays, and there's close to white from the snow, and there's light grays, but it was a very overcast day, and so I didn't get that great tonal range you get when the light's kind of popping through the clouds. There's an interesting use of space as well. There's the ground, the sky, which is broken up by the hydro towers, and of course there's the space on the left and right side of the trail, which kind of keeps your eye moving back and forth. If I could do this differently, I would definitely try to get around this plant that's right here. I feel like it kind of got in the way, and it's too close to her. It's a bit distracting, but there's nothing I could do in the moment because of where she was standing, I had to take the picture at that time. I would, like I said, shoot on a day when the sky was more interesting. Maybe I'd have to bring someone as a subject to walk down this trail for me. Like I said, I got lucky that she was there when I shot. And finally, I might get a little bit closer because you can't tell from this photo, but the actual photo is a crop from my phone. Uh, I couldn't get close enough in the time that I had, and so I had to do a fair amount of cropping, which cost me in terms of image quality. That's it. I hope you enjoyed looking at my photos and learning a little bit about Ansel Adams. I look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks for watching.